uh, this is from Winter 2.2, uh, Paper Variant 2.2. We're looking at question 5. This is a wave question. And here we have two progressive sound waves meeting to form a stationary wave. Okay. The two waves have the same amplitude, wavelength, frequency, speed. Yes, all the conditions are there. State the other condition that must be fulfilled by the two waves in order for them to produce a stationary wave. So in the lecture video, we have listed down why and how stationary wave is produced. But the main key factor besides them being identical to each other is that they have to travel in the opposite direction. Okay, if not, then it's, it's sad. They won't meet. If they don't meet, there is no stationary wave to study. Okay, so I'll say here that both waves must travel in the opposite direction. This is just one mark. Pretty simple. Part B, a stationary wave is formed on a string that is stretched between two fixed points AB. And this picture shows you the string when it is at the maximum displacement. Okay, distance AB is 0 0.8 meter. And the period of the stationary wave is 0 0.016 seconds. On figure 5.1, sketch a solid line to show the position of the string at different different times. You have 0 0.04 second, you have 0 0.024 second. So whenever you are asked to sketch a wave, whether it's stationary or progressive wave, the first thing I need to ask myself is what's the period? Like 0 0.04 is t over 4. It's quarter of a period. All right. Just like 0 0.0224. Uh, divide by 0 0.016 this one when I, I need to press calculator but we want them to, we want to know like what fraction of it like how many t's is it so that I can adjust or visualize the wave accordingly so the idea of using simulation is so that you can do this in the exam when you don't have simulation this is 1.5 t okay let's take a particle uh, take from here this is already at maximum displacement. So if I want 1t, my particle have to go back up to here at this highest position and come back down. This is t. Which means here would be t over 2. And where would t over 4 be? It means this point here would be t over 4. Okay, so you imagine the particle go up, come down, t. Go up, t. Go up halfway, t over 4. Okay, so if the maximum point is already here, it means that your stationary wave is flat. Okay, entirely flat. So this one would look something, I will draw something like this. And of course, I'm going to follow their label. This is Okay, the next one, 1.5t. So if you cycle up and down is t, you cycle back to the same point again, this will be 1.5t or 3t over 2, which means this point is now here. The point of the wave is now here. So you can imagine you have a particle moving up and down. 1.5t will be go up, come down, there will be t and another half cycle. 1.5t. If I know this point is here, I can finish up the wave shape already. So the standing wave has flipped into the opposite direction. So ideally, hopefully, you can draw something that is smooth. And also the mirror image of the black color wave. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to look somewhat symmetrical. This will be Q. Okay. The reason why I can answer the question here without referring to the simulation is because I have basically explained to you how I visualize one particle and use particle to use one particle here, this one to guide me. 
okay but it's not a given now right so if you need to to watch a simulation you can just know that you don't have a simulation during the actual exam itself so like for example now let's say this is after t over four okay and then the next t over four it will look like this so this is quad this is two quarters which is half okay three quarters flat one t you are back to the original position okay so every time i click i move t over four that's why i know lah. but this is a bit hard to see if let's say during the exam you don't understand what is going on okay so play a bit with the simulation if you need to you can find out on the website but we're gonna continue determine the speed of the progressive wave along the string so whenever you find speed of wave you're going to use vf lambda right and in this case i probably need to find the lambda so your stationary wave will still follow the basic pattern. If I count lambda, this is one complete cycle. So here to here is one lambda. And then here is another complete cycle. Here to here is two lambda. So two lambda is equal to 0 0.8 meter. So two lambda is 0 0.8 meter. So lambda will be 0 0.4 meter put 0 0.4 here and frequency is 1 over t I have the period 0 0.016 so 1 over 0 0.016 let me consult my calculator All right this is 25 meter per second this is three marks, huh? very nice one. Okay, you find lambda correctly, you get one mark just by looking at the shape. Like that is one lambda. Like that also one lambda. Basically, if you do three go three hundred and sixty degree, like that is also one lambda. Okay, complete three hundred and sixty degree. The next one after you find lambda would be to use v equal to f lambda or lambda over t. This will be C1. Then finally, you've got the right answer, A1. Okay. This is pretty okay. It's not too complicated. Doable. But you also need to state the equation. C1. Moving on. Oh, hey, I see polarizing again. So right now, we have a beam of vertically polarized light, I0. So this one is already I not. If you are doing a uh, polarizing quest, polarization question, you will realize that sometimes they didn't polarize for you first. So let's compare. If you look at the variant two one, this light is unpolarized, which means it's in all direction. And then this one is polarized, plain polarized. But if you look at variant 2, 2, this one is already polarized. So meaning before this, there's another filter that they never bother to draw for you. Okay, low. Like that one. They didn't draw for you. <laughs> okay. Anyway, this is I0. It's going to pass through the polarizing filter with the transmission axis 30 degree to the vertical. So this is a vertically polarized light, so which means the starting position would be like this. So the starting position or starting orientation will be here. So in your Mellor's law, we will be using 30 degree. Once it passed through the first filter, you have an intensity I1. Okay, and this, and this first filter, this this uh, wave that come out from the first filter will be parallel to the transmission axis. Okay, it won't be the same intensity, obviously, but it will be parallel to the transmission axis, which is uh, okay. Now very hard to draw parallel. Let me let me just do this thing that I can do because I'm using one node. Okay, the light that come out from here will all be in this direction. You okay? Pro smaller intensity but in this direction 
okay, parallel to the transmission axis. Just like this one is vertical, so the vertical one is parallel to the vertical axis. And then you flip it parallel to the transmission axis. Now we need to pass through this one, I, uh, which means if let's say I paste one last one here, this is the direction of the incident wave. I'm just going to change this to red. Okay. So this one here is the initial orientation or direction. This one is also the initial orientation. Which means now the angle that we will take is this one. Let's say this is theta 2. Whereas for this case, this angle that we take 30 degree, this is theta 1. Okay, so to figure out which angle to use for Miller's law, the key here is to understand when the wave hit the filter, it has its initial direction or orientation. Uh, before you hit the filter, you got your own direction. After you hit the filter, the filter will only allow those that is parallel to the direction of the filter to pass through. Okay, which is why this one is in this direction. And then, when it hits the second filter, the second filter will only allow wave that is in that is parallel to the transmission axis to pass through. So now the wave will be like that now. Smaller intensity. This is I2. Okay. This is I1. So this initial orientation is before filter. Before filter 2. This is before filter 1. Okay. So, take note about the angle. So the first one you are asked to calculate uh, the ratio of I1 to I0. So I'll state the Miller's law first. The transmitted intensity is I0 cos square theta. Okay. So this one, the transmitted intensity for this filter is I1. The incident is I0. So I'll put that in first. This is I1. This is I0. And then the angle between the initial orientation and the transmission axis is 30 degree. So this is 30. Okay. So I0, I1 over I0 is equal to cos 30 square. Okay. So this is what you're pressing in your calculator. All right. So when you look at cos 30 square, there'll be root 3 over 2 square. Or you can press your calculator. No problem. That'll be 3 over 4. Yay. Teacher, I thought cannot write fraction are correct. Lah. So please write 2SF. Even if they are asking for the ratio of two values, okay, always in decimal form. Because if you write in fraction, I don't know how many, how many significant figure is fraction. Final answer should be 2 to 3 SF. Okay. All right. Next. We're going to repeat again. I is I naught cos square theta. Now for the people who need it, maybe I'll draw a picture for you. Okay, so for the first one, this is your polarizing filter. Okay, and then your intent incident, and then the one that passed through. The axis is in this direction. Okay, but your light when it's coming in is vertical. So that's why we take the vertical direction. This one is 30 degree. And then after that, the light that passed through will all be in this direction. Okay, this is first filter. Now the second filter will receive the light that emerges from the first filter. Again, let me try to draw. Wink, wink. It's a bit long. Okay, something like this. So this green color one is Sengek T 
tilted this way already tilted 30 degree okay but the transmission axis for this is actually in this direction oh which means from the original angle here to here must be 60 degree okay my drawing is obviously not as nice as what you can have here lah. but this is the angle that you want this one theta 2 is 60 degree because this one was 30 degree okay so the incident is now i1 the transmitted is i2 the angle between the transmitted and the vertical the transmission axis is 60 degree so i'm going to put that in okay this will be i2 the one that come out i1 is the one that is incident this is i1 the one that come out here is i2 this is i not the one that come out here is i1 okay then this will be i1 cos square 60 all right so from here you have i2 is i mean you can put i2 over i1 i know this is not what they want but this is the ratio that i have so i, pl I go with it first this cos 60 will be half so this will be half square which is 1 over 4 or 0 0.25 Okay, so finally, if you want I2 over I0, this will be equal to, okay, what do I have? I have I0 over I1. I want to get rid of I1, uh, so shouldn't I just multiply by I1 over I0? Or, you know, you can look at it as the light that enter here is 100% the light that come out here is 3 over 4 right 75 percent the final light that exit the second filter is 25 percent of the 75 percent so out of the 75 percent only quarter is left so you multiply la. that's why you multiply them or you think about ratio when you multiply the i1 cancel so i2 over i1 is 1 over 4 I1 over I0 is 0 0.75 or 3 over 4. This will give me 3 over 16. And as usual, we don't leave our final answer in fraction because I don't know what SF it is. This is 0 0.19. Okay. So the general confusion is people don't know when and what angle to take. So what you need to be very sure of in your brain is the angle has to be between the wave that is oncoming and the transmission axis. Number one, I write for you. This angle has to be between the, the orientation or the direction of the incident wave and transmission axis number one and number two is also important to remember that the emerging wave is parallel to the transmission axis so if your transmission axis is 30 degree then the wave that come out will also be 30 degree long, which is the case here all right that's it for this question